Hello everyone. It looks like stocks have run into resistance around the 50-day moving average across the board. The NASDAQ reversed today 0.71%. According to Telechart, volume was higher. This is a clear distribution day. And this is a distribution day around the late January highs that also coincide with the 50-day moving average. Overall, not good. But still, before you start getting too bearish and thinking that we're going to definitely go to the lows, a reminder, we're in the middle of a big trading range of 2016 using the February lows and January highs. Volume wasn't above average today, so keep that in mind before you get too bearish here. But I got to admit, scans, they look terrible. They've looked terrible the entire bounce attempt. They're garbage, in fact. Leadership is completely wrong. Uh, sentiment got extreme, but there was no panic at the February lows, so... Uh, even if we don't hit new lows, I find it hard to believe that we're going to take out the January highs anytime soon. And by soon, I mean in the next 30 days. Moving over to the S&P 500, similar situation, a reversal back below the 50-day moving average. Now, you know why we called it a soft switch and our models didn't switch in aggregate. We still remain under a sell signal across the board. The S&P 500 reversing back on the 50-day moving average on very strong volume. Um, I was thinking about maybe, you know, uh, taking a position SPY, but the best signals in these ETFs and indexes come when there's confirmation across the board. And the fact that SPXL, SPXU, SPXS, none of those had higher volume, including SPY, it's hard to take that as a signal on its own. So we'll see how it plays out. We're range bound. Uh, we could easily break out to new short-term highs. We could break out past those Friday intraday highs and keep moving higher here. Um, it's just too early to tell. If there was big volume everywhere in all the ETFs and the indexes, you know, I'd be all for it. But once again, the NASDAQ volume was below average and below average volume basically everywhere else. So hard to get too bearish on that note. And with that, the Dow Jones Industrial Average also had below average volume with its retake below the 50-day moving average. The Russell 2000 actually won that bad, down 0.32%, but you can see it's also finding resistance right at its 50-day moving average and ending it with the Dow Jones Transportation Average still under a sell signal like it has been since May. Um, the, the, it doesn't look great, doesn't look bad. Like I said, looks range-bound, if anything, to me. I wouldn't take too much away from today's session, though it was not positive. Now, getting to actual... House cleaning items, uh, it should be made note that today, everything was up today in my portfolio. UVXY hedge was up. All of my long positions were up besides two stocks, IDA and SPKE. So, as you can see, IDA is barely down. SPKE is barely down, but it is taking out its, you know, February support levels back here, which is my final sell stop levels. So, you would think that based on today's trading with everything being higher and IDA being barely down that I would have one partial sell in IDA because half my sell stop was with the move below the Friday low a day so that would be one half and then SPKE but unfortunately today some shakeouts OLLI shook me out completely so I'm completely out of OLLI but by the end of the day flat and then of course the funniest one today the one that I want to thank the market makers the most is OGS OGS not only hit my first sell stop below Friday's low a day, but it also took out this low a day by about 10 cents, triggering my final sell stop before reversing and ending higher. Now, I wouldn't even think of putting at least half of OGS back on, which I would put half of OGS back on if it breaks out above the 59.37 level, or 60.04, excuse me, if it breaks out above 60.04. So if it tr triggers 60.05, I'll get long half of the OGS again. The bottom line is, is that with the full sell in OGS, the full sell in SPKE, full sell in OLLI, and half sell in IDA, you wouldn't think that almost everything was higher today. But it was. IDA and SPKE were the only real sells. And on an end-of-day basis, SPKE is a full sell. If today's sell-off would have been below average volume, I would say go ahead on an end-of-day basis and use 2350 as your final sell stop level. But because the low of the day... Or the low, most recent low following the pocket pivot point signal was 24.37. SPKE is closing at 24.22, below 24.37 on above average volume. It is a 100% sell on an end-of-day basis. 
Now, for further stocks that we're looking for actionability, intraday tomorrow, GSI, looking for fall through. Uh, intraday, uh, one of our members nailed this as one to watch for a strong close and possibly a move higher tomorrow. It is a former runner. So keep that on your watch list, GSI. And then also Etsy is a recent earnings winner. It's uh, been able to hold its 50-day moving average since that earnings date. Held 721 intraday today. Got a surge in BOP and volume was significantly higher. So we'll see if Etsy can work off there. Also ELMD is now starting to go on Supernova Watch. So I'll be looking for intraday reversals. Hopefully it can run tomorrow. Maybe cross five and then recross five to the downside. Go green to red. Start to look for a short position ELMD hopefully whenever I'm awake and then also GSS while it's a gold stock and whoops while I am interested in it as a pot potential supernova there we go as a potential supernova it is a gold stock it's probably more bullish move than just a supernova like move so I'm not really looking to short it unless it really gets really really crazy upside like if it runs to like from 50 cents to one dollar in one day after already this uptrend then I'd start looking to want to, you know, short maybe a fade or some kind of reversal. But gold stocks continue to look good overall, even though they started to look a little rough on Friday with the heavier volume reversal. They fixed that again today on heavier volume. And that's going to lead us then to the actionable positions this evening. There's actually quite a few, which is very shocking to me, but not really. That's the way this market is. That's why you got to keep everything tiny. OME, Canceling Quality Food and Beverage Stock. We're already long ANFI, AGRO, and JBSS, all food stocks. So if you're into the safety slash inflation play, OME is another one. Breaking out to new highs on a pocket pivot point signal and a strong surge in volume and a slight surge in BOP. I guess I read that Mark Minervini is already long this name. So, you know, that's some good confirmation right there. But OME is kind of breaking out of a kind of a sloppy pattern. That's not really a move that you want to chase. So because it's canceling 1%, it was also my price volume BOP scan, so that'll get 0.5%. I'm not chasing up to 24.13, so if it gaps higher, so be it. I want it at 23.75, no more than 23.75. First sell stop would be 22.25. Final sell stop will be 21.34, so we don't risk it that much before we know we're wrong on a small percentage of our portfolio. That's the best long signal this evening, the only real long signal that's canceling quality. And then also RWR, we are already short and still short RWR in the margin account. It is giving a very extremely high quality ad signal. In fact, I could push this up to 5% but damn it, I just don't trust anything in this market. Um, if the damn market wasn't so fucking volatile recently in the past two months, you can be sure this is a 5%, maybe even up to a 10% position using 88.44 as your final stop. But with this tape, I'm just going to go ahead and keep pussyfooting trades. So we'll keep RWR 2.5% position. I know I'm going to regret it. That's a super, super, super strong signal. I wish I could trust my gut, but this market's not making that possible. And then DRV is going to be using the IRA in exchange for RWR using 2005 as the final sell stop. There is no inverse position on RD, RWR as that's a REIT ETF. DRV is real estate related, but you know, it's good enough, it's close enough. So we'll do 1.25% in the IRA in that position. And then also I have a couple of speculative longs that might as well try it out because I mean, these are great signals. And uh, if we're wrong, we're not going to risk much, but I'm going to put 0.5% into GNRT. As you can see, GNRT has steadily trended lower. Finally really started to sell off in January, had a washout on lower volume in February. It's been, it's had a couple of pocket pivot point signals, continue to move higher on heavier volume, pulled back on lower volume, and now we've got a pocket pivot point signal on strong volume with the surge in BOP. So I'm going to go ahead and chance it and put 0.5% in GNRT. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. New traders shouldn't take it. And then FCPT, don't mind the gap down. They had like an $8.30 dividend. Telechart does not fix the charts following dividends, uh, X dividends, which is stupid to me. Investors Business Daily does though. So if you want to look at Market Smith, you'll get a clear idea. But you can see pocket pivot point signal earlier off the February lows, low volume on the pullback, big surge in volume in BOP today, pocket pivot point signal. So once again, 0.5%. GNRT is technically canceling quality on an EPS side, 
but sadly, relative strength wise, not. And as for FCPT, strong relative strength, weak EPS, both are speculative, both 0.5%, no more, no less.